doing a paper and marker test and I'm doing a translucent Yubo, which is sort of like a, a almost transparent plastic paper. Um, you can't tear it, but you can cut it. And I cut this with a paper trimmer. Um, Yupo and Pit Pins, which are water-based India ink pens um, that I've been sort of investigating recently. I've done a few brief paper tests of the Pit Pins and um, I thought Yupo and Vellum would be excellent paper choices for it. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now, um, this is not any particular set. I've bought these colors all open stock. I'm not really a big fan of the colors they include in their sets because it seems like in their, in most companies attempts to bridge the entire rainbow, they um, include a lot of colors that are just not useful to me at all. Uh, so I decided to assemble a set as I needed it and um, I think that's probably a little more cost effective for me as an artist with the way I render and the things I prefer to render. Now, a note of caution before we begin, these markers, they are not, the colors on the barrel are not always as close to the color of the ink as one would like. So make sure if you're going to use these, you have swatches with color examples and color numbers next to them. It's going to make it a lot easier to render. Another note is although I have done a few tests on Yupo, this is my first time doing a full size piece. So um, I can't make any promises as to how this will turn out. Um, so before I started the video, I taped my piece of Yupo down on top of my sketchbook, which had my inks in it. And I used some rubbing alcohol to remove any oils from the surface of the Yupo. Oils on the surface of, the, of your Yupo, like oils from your hand, will cause a resist when you're trying to put markers or inks on top of it. So I wanted to avoid that. And I'm starting in with a very light skin color. I think you can do some layering on here if you give it plenty of time to dry. And I'll tell you guys in a second what color I'm using. You pit pins come in two sizes. They come in the small size, which I'm using right here. And they also come in a very handy big brush, which is less the size of a um of like an inking pen and more the size of an actual marker so if you're having trouble getting um the sort of lines you want to achieve you might want to switch the size of your marker so i'm going to use oh wait actually the marvi worked better with these because the Tombow ABT left it a little greasy. So I'm blending these out just a little bit with Marvi La Plume 2 Colorless Blender. And the Marvi will actually pull color away from the paper. So what you're really thinking about is picking up areas of excess color rather than bringing color to areas where there wasn't color prior. And the color I used was Light Skin, which is 114. Now recently I did a, a, a marker test with water-based markers on Yupo, and I found that my colors shifted kind of grotesquely, to be honest. Um, and the ones that shifted the most out of the two brands were the um, Zig Art and Graphic Twin, which are juicier markers. And I am hoping that the pit pens, which are kind of similar to the Zig Brushables I used, and those are the markers that move the least, I'm kind of hoping the pit pens will not be prone to shifting. However, I am going to scan this piece as soon as I finish it tonight. 
let me pull in so you guys can see what I'm doing. I already put down um, the base coat for my skin and I wanted to allow it time to dry. So I'm working on putting a shadow around Kara to sort of ground her on the picture plane. Now, if you have a calligrapher's mall stick, which is um, a mall stick that is closer to the paper than a traditional painting mall stick, this would be the time to pull it out because you could, um, it would help you keep your hand from resting on the paper. So you would be able to hover and you wouldn't be getting um, hand, the grease, the oils from your hand on your paper. Now I wiped my hand down with rubbing alcohol before I got started. Um, and I hope that will help some. I don't expect it to fully solve the problem though. In my other, uh, my water-based test on Yupo, even though I'd wiped my hand down and I'd wiped the paper down, I did eventually get some uh, resist as the oils had built up significantly. And um, Marvy blenders are a little bit harder to find than uh, Tombow ABT blenders. I got mine at Jerry's Artorama in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I don't think they even carry them anymore because they were having problems with the markers going dry. I haven't had that problem, but I believe them. And I think I also mentioned in a prior video that Yupo is prone to a static charge and wants to attract all the bits of schmutz you've got in your studio. Now I need to give that a moment to dry. So I'm going to see if I can get my skin tone to layer. If not, I have a darker one. All right, it does look like there is some layering, a slight darkening of color. Now um, on normal papers, pit pins are um, waterproof and permanent once they fully dried. Now on a paper like Yupo, which is a synthetic paper, it's really a plastic, um, your dry time is going to be significantly longer because it's not like your ink can soak into the paper. It's all sitting on top. And I'm noticing that if I'm not careful in my brush strokes, if I'm a little bit scrubby, it will pick up my prior layers. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I finally got my cards cleared off enough that I can progress with this. It took like an hour, more than that really. Um, usually I'm pretty good about not letting my video get backed up, but you know, I had a few things come up recently and I just kind of lost track of myself. So I put down a layer of idanthrene blue, which is number 247, and I'm gonna blend it out. Oh, that's kind of nice. I have to clean the pen though after because I don't want it to remain contaminated. I'm blending it out with that light indigo that I had done the original. So that's pretty cool, huh? And it picked up enough of the ink that you can really see where I'm applying it now, which is also pretty cool. If I can, that is if I can get it off of my, uh, the tip of my pen. So I also want to use that blue on her eyes. I want to try to keep it on the whites as much as possible. Now, normally I really wouldn't uh, be as careful as I'm being. I would just kind of apply it. But um, since it's so prone to picking up, which I think is a good thing, since it's so prone to picking up, I wanted to make sure I didn't contaminate my browns. Okay, so it's 
time I can I feel like I can start in on the skin again so I'm looking for my medium flesh there yeah there it is and like I said some of these colors the barrel isn't really indicative enough of the color that's within and medium flesh is kind of one of those colors it's actually um it's actually less pink than the barrel would in less intense i guess i should say than the barrel would indicate the barrel is pretty dark um and it is a darker skin tone pink but it's still a very usable skin tone pink and um since the blending under her shadow went so well. I think I'm going to go ahead and use use the same method. So, so far I like how these handle on the Yupo. I don't really have any complaints yet. I am concerned that they'll bleed the, the way my other water-based things bled. The pink is looking a little intense. It's not blending out quite the way I wanted it to, but I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's just not good. Oh, see there, it starts to scrub away. So you need to have a light hand with these on you, Bo. Now I might need to use the, um, the Marvy. Hopefully all my noodling around won't cause problems. Sometimes the more I pick at something that I'm not 100% familiar with, the worse it gets. So I have to be careful. But I think, I think that's gonna be okay. Wow. Maybe not. Maybe I gotta clean that. Okay. All right. So, skin is coming along fairly good. And I had used light skin as my base color and medium flesh as my, like the, the pink in her cheeks. So I'm going to use light flesh, which is 132. Oh, that's medium, oh, medium skin is too dark. I want light flesh. Some of these names are a little creepy. <laughs> and I mean, you know, all right, there's, yeah, that's light flesh, that's what I want. They're also um, not really very descriptive. I mean, flesh comes in a variety of colors. Gonna end up running out of colors that I can use for her freckles if I'm not careful. I am using a as light a hand as I possibly can because um, a little bit earlier when I was applying the blush, I scrubbed too much in an attempt to blend, and I was starting to lift the color rather than um, blend it. Yeah, that area is going to be a problem area is all I can say because it wants to do it again. Oh, I'm just going to have to leave that area alone. And now I'm just kind of blending her skin out with the lighter, the lighter shade. And for small areas, it's not working as well as it did down here. Oh, down there, sorry. So I think what I'm, see I'm not really known for my patience. I'm gonna end up messing this up. And it was working pretty well until I opted to add the, um, well, the next darkest color I had. And that kinda, but things up a little. Okay, let's see if I can get it with the... with a delicate hand on the... 
Just sort of trying to use the blender to push and pick up things, replace them. See, that's what her face looks like right now. The problem is, um, which color was it? Light flesh picked up the layer of um, light skin I'd put down. So, um, it didn't, the way, the way these sort of colors, the way you want to work with this is you want to think about translucency and you want to think about it, um, what is the word? Influencing other, co how colors influence the colors that are on top of them. Um, and so I wanted that pink warmish color to influence the, um, the color I put on top of it. So since I wanted that warm tone, I'm kind of, kind of going in with the pink I had used as a blush and I'm just kind of hinting, kind of putting it back in. All right, sorry, I wanted to give that a chance to sort of set up and dry. So I'm going to do her freckles with Sanguine, which is um, a little darker than I would normally do. But given how I'm having um, just kind of mixed results with getting colors to layer properly, uh, I'm not going to worry about that about it being a little dark and I'm also going to use ivory on the white parts of her outfit and ivory is more it's um more of a yellowish sort of white than a like a true ivory or a cream Now I, yeah, I could leave it like that. I was gonna blend it out, but it looks fine as it is. And I would have to clean my Tombow, which is fine. I'm just, you know, it's like one extra step. I was a dummy and I had my hand on the paper and it hasn't picked up yet, yet. I don't want to say it's not going to because, um, sorry, I was trying to put it with the yellows because it is such a yellow, um, white. Now I'm going to go ahead and put down the, f oh, in okay, yeah. I had opted not to do her ear. I sketched it in and then was like, no. And I might have to pull out the light box. Because with the darker colors, they are not transparent. I'll tell you, this particular Indian red really wants to pull nice highlights. I'm also not super concerned with, um, like streaking because they seem to even out on the paper surface. You know, I really ought to maybe pull out the light table for her eyebrows because I am having trouble seeing them. It's okay. Let's see. move this out of the way and move this over here. I know I'm almost off camera. But I'm glad I did it because her eyebrows were cocked up a little bit and um, pushing down and um, using the light table made it a lot easier to see what I was doing.
See, I'm trying to give everything enough time to dry. And with Yupo, even if it's dry, it's still gonna be kind of glossy on the paper because it's sitting on the paper surface. And I had decided on dark sepia. There we go. And I kind of liked how her hair turned out in like just to begin with. So I don't want to do a whole lot to mess with it. And I also don't want to like scrape it off the paper surface. Okay, so I need to give that time to set up. I've been kind of breathing on it, not on purpose, but just by leaning in on it. Um, and I don't want it, I might as well show you guys what happened with the water-based markers. And it's probably worse than when I took the photo. That's what happened. Just like, look how much that's traveled. Look how much the color down there has shifted. So, um, you know, and that's mostly seems to be the issue with the, um, art and graphic twin rather than the, t -t 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 the brushables. So I'm hoping these perform more like the brushables and less like the art and graphic twin. So in the interim, I went out to cookout and got myself a hot dog and a milkshake. And um, eating that kind of stuff leaves your hands greasy and you don't wanna work on this sort of stuff with greasy hands. And one of the ways you can combat that is by spritzing some rubbing alcohol either on your hands or on a paper towel and wiping your hands down with that. And that's um, a good thing to do if like it's kind of a warm day, um, or, you know, you've just been working for a long time because the grease on your hands, like we talked about earlier, can cause a resist on synthetic papers like Yupo, and that will inhibit your ability to apply marker. So, just a heads up. So if I were using the big brush markers, this would actually be going a lot quicker than it is right now because I'd be able to cover these areas faster but um this still isn't too bad and it's a lot easier than trying to use a bullet nib to render and so far uh, most of my brushes have pretty good flex in them a couple of them have gotten a little mushy from you know over well not overuse I need to flip the nibs in them and um, there are good video tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. So I'm not going to show y'all because there are plenty of other sources for that that are just as good, if not even better than me. Now I'm going for, because I was thinking I want that to be black. Now, I mean, I could grab a black or, um, I can use a blue and a gray, and hopefully this will work. This would work with markers. There is no guarantee it's gonna work with this. And before I go too much further, I should let this dry, and um, I hadn't, her shirt had that yellow tint to it, and I didn't, I missed that. So I need to go back think I want her hood to be red okay so the yellow um it's it's still setting up while it dries I'm going to try to gingerly ink color in the um her girdle now the small tips are actually phenomenal for small areas like that so um except I got a hair on it. That was my fault, not theirs. Um, 
I could definitely see having um, like duplicates of some colors in the big brush and in the fine tip. But I can also see having um, the big brush for colors you know you're going to be using for large areas. So like, uh, like landscape kind of colors or maybe blues for the sky. I mean, I'm not really getting streaking. The ink tends to sort of like self-level. So streaking isn't really the issue, but it's more of a time sort of thing. Using the big brush would definitely help. So I need to let that dry before I can go over it with another layer. And um, while I'm thinking about whether or not I actually wanna to commit to making the hood red, what I can do is I can color in the hearts and kind of decide how I feel about the color because the this red, which is Pale Geranium Lake, is sort of a weak red, like, um, one of the things I noticed in pit pin reviews is people talking about how vibrant these colors are. And um, for the most part, they are very vibrant colors. Um, this particular one is just kind of like the, the barrel is like very vibrant fire engine red. It's even redder in real life than it's showing up on camera. And the result is kind of, mm, just kind of a lackluster red. And you know, that's that would be fine um, if I did have a more intense red. You know, I could use this to do like a base color and then go over it with that intense red, but I currently don't. And I'll have to pick one up later, but for now it's kind of weak to do the, the hood with. Now I could do her skirt in orange and her hood in that lovely dark blue that we're about to color with cover with gray and possibly wreck. And I also have a couple pinks that would work well, but not not with the <laughs> not with the um, the orange. I mean, they would work well with the blue. So maybe I'll go in that direction. See, I am getting some of that scraping again that I talked to you guys about earlier. See, some areas, I think it's just a drawing issue because some areas um, will scrape and then some areas it sits really nicely. So I probably just haven't given the brown enough time to really set. And um, I'm sure at some point I will figure out a time. It's probably a little longer than five minutes, which is a little, a little extreme. So another problem I'm having, and it's not an issue with the pit pins. It's just an issue of using um, UPO and pit pins and water-based markers and, you know, um, just that sort of a thing is um, because the markers dry glossy, it's hard to tell if they're dry or if they're still wet. And see here, let me zoom in so you guys can see here. It is scraping the ink off. So it means I didn't wait long enough to let it dry. And I'm not super concerned because I feel like I could probably go over the area and make some corrections. But if you're interested in using pit pens on UPO, that is definitely something you would like, you would want to be aware of. Ah, oh, sorry. See the scraping? It's something you'd want to be aware of so you can make accommodations. Now I'll probably go back over that area a lot long a lot I'm gonna wait a long time and then go back over that area um just to give it enough time to actually dry now I really do think I want to do 
blue for her hood and the pink on her dress. So, so far, the dark gray is layering on top of the blue, and you can definitely see the blue through it, which is what I wanted, but it's still not as dark as I was hoping it would be. And um, this is the darkest dark gray I currently own. Now, I do have a black pit pen in my inking stash, so I think I think I'm going to grab, let this dry, of course, but grab it and use that for like the final layer. Now, since I keep working over the face, I am concerned that my hand will pick up the inks. So I'm grabbing a sheet or a piece of tracing paper. It's huge uh, to use as sort of a barrier. And probably when I'm done, I'll use the tracing paper or a test with the pit pins. It doesn't have to be this big, um, but it is, so why not go with it, right? Let me tear off that little stray piece. And let's see if I can't find my black pit pin. Oh, wait, there it is see what condition it is. It's still pretty much new. Don't really use these for inking, so that's gonna end up in my coloring kit. So I'm gonna let that set up and probably go ahead and commit to that blue on her hood. And I'm probably gonna have to move some things over and use the light table. handy thing about having a glass desk. The less handy thing is um, turn that off to help with the reflection. Uh, people can see my reflection in the glass. Which actually, honestly, it doesn't bother me all that much. Um, having a glass top desk has its um, ups and downs. Um, the surface has no give, so if you're penciling, your lead is going to break a lot. But it is super easy to clean and not prone to staining. Of course, I have to put a craft mat or a piece of chipboard if I want to cut something on it. Honestly, my real complaint is the fact that it reflects light so much. Um, especially in my videos. And sometimes I'll put something down to try and like bounce, the, keep the light from reflecting into the camera basically. Uh, sometimes I know I'm gonna be moving what I'm working around so much that I can't really sacrifice the desktop space. So I won't do that, but that's, that's my big issue. So I just found a flaw and I'm not sure if it's the pigment shifting, like what happened with um, my other water-based thing, but I'm gonna try to fix it very gingerly. That's right, these colors are not in quite indicative of them. Let's turn off that and see. I could actually go darker. The thing is, once these dry on the, um, the Yupo, it does take a little bit of scrubbing to get them moving. Oh, I don't want to use that. Okay, I think that actually reflects her jawline. Now, after that's had a little more time to dry, I'm going to go over... Oh, there we go. I'm gonna go over it um, so I can like build up that dark blue since I want to indicate the inside of the hood versus the outside of the hood. Yeah, it's tacky, so it's a good thing I am using tracing paper to help me out. Oh, 
it was pointed out to me in a prior video that I should mention to you guys that if you don't have an LED light table like I have, you shouldn't be flicking it on and off repeatedly. Um, you'll It's a waste of energy and you'll kill your pad and, you know, a bunch of other very legit reasons, so... If you do, however, have an LED tracing table, it's probably fine. So a little surprisingly, the black sets up just fine on the Yupo, um, not having any real problems with it. In fact, it tends to go down easier and with less scrubbing than um, some of the other colors. Fortunate, unfortunately, Walnut Brown is still scrubbing away prior layers, so... Going to have to move on without it, I guess. Now at this point, I'm going to be talking a lot less because I don't want to breathe hot, moist air onto what I'm working on because I'm a little concerned that that caused spearing and migration on um, my other Yupo water-based uh, piece. And um, I just am trying to prevent that from happening since I still have kind of a long way to go on this. So, um, what's probably going to happen is this is probably going to be sped up and, um, I'll only talk when I have something important or noteworthy to say about what I'm doing. But in general, as of right now, it seems like with care and a little caution, Pit pins and Yupo get along pretty well. So, um, if you are looking for Copic like blending effects from your pit pins, it really matters what paper you use. And um, papers like Yupo, while difficult and often frustrating, might be the surface you're looking for.